Um, Steve's got a, a business in Adamstown near Newcastle um, and has been doing particularly well inside the Gym Hub program. Um, and this is one of my favourite sessions of the month is where we interview someone that's kicking goals. Uh, we ask them, you know, what are they doing for marketing? What are they doing for staff recruitment and stuff like that? And I, I love these sessions because it gives you an opportunity to find little shortcuts of things that are working well right now. But it's also an, an opportunity, I think, to sidestep some of those common issues that fitness studios experience by learning about what not to do as well. So, um, yeah, really excited to have you on the call today, Steve. Um, let's dive straight into it. Um, tell me, what, what were you doing before Gym Hub? What's a bit about your background? Um, mate, so I had a gym years and years ago, um, and then probably about 10 years ago, and then I got out of that, and then... Life got busy with a couple of young kids, so I just started working from a studio that I set up at home. Yep. And then um, I um, went, then I had the idea of going back into a you know a commercial space, and that's when I originally got in contact with you and decided to bite the bullet and have a crack at doing something a bit bigger rather than just working out a studio from home. Yeah, very cool. And what what were some of the challenges you had before we started working together? Because you. You obviously had a bit of a, an outdoor business happening there. And probably my lack of knowledge on, on how to generate leads, Steve, and, um, you know, how to brand the business and just ideas on not only the leads but, you know, how to retain members. So just probably my lack of knowledge, mate, it's probably the main okay. thing. Yeah, sure. So obviously um, for, for those guys that haven't met Steve, he's got a – a sporting background with a background in a rugby league, obviously looks fit and interested in fitness and um, yeah, getting involved in Gym Hub to learn a bit more about the, the business side of stuff. Um, tell us about your, your current gym. What's it called? Um, where are you located? Sunrise Fitness is the name. Um, we're located in Adamstown in Newcastle on a main road in there, which has been really helpful. Um, but yeah, so no, obviously not everyone knows Newcastle that well, but Adam sounds probably one of the sort of central sort of suburbs, and yeah, it's a good area. Yeah, very good. Um, what what sort of services do you offer? What do you charge? Let's give the guys a bit. Of we're, idea. we're a group personal training studio. Um, we can have a maximum of thirty two people in there at a time. We do thirty six sessions a week, mate. We charge for unlimited um, visits is fifty five dollars per week. I love it. Um, do they have the ability to do two sessions a week if they don't want unlimited? Yeah, they can do two sessions. That's $44. Okay. Um, I'm interested. What do most people choose? 55 unlimited. There's probably 70% unlimited, 30%. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And you call it group um, personal training, but it is uh, predominantly like a group training model um, and your goal is to make it more personal. Uh, yeah, we always um, pretty much always have two staff members on all the time. Um, so anytime someone comes in, the session's set up for them. Um, you know, it starts, we, they go for 45 minutes. We, we gap them by 50 minutes each session. So there's a bit of leeway in between each one. Okay. But the, the session's fully set up for each each member, um, and so they don't have to don't have to think; they just have to come in and train. Very good. I know you've got some good staff. How how many staff have you got? Um, where did you find them? I, um, myself and three others. Uh, I you know I, I trained them in the past, Steve, and um, I knew that um, that that they'd all become personal trainers and they were doing work for other people. And, yeah, so I just approached them about, about coming over once I, we sat down and have a, had a chat. And I mean, they, they're I'm really lucky. They're really, really quality staff. But, but yeah, we made sure, I made sure that, um, you know, from tips I'd learn off you guys, that I asked them all the right questions and, yeah, they're, they're working out super well. Okay. So you already sort of knew them from the fitness industry. They weren't like advertising that they were looking for a job, but instead you've just reached out to them and said, hey, this is what I'm doing. Would you like to have a coffee? Pretty much, mate. I, I had heard one of them wasn't happy where she was currently working, so that worked in pretty well. Yep. Um, the, other, the other two are um, look a little bit younger, but have 
got a you know a good amount of experience and yeah I, I'd train them and I just said to them hey why don't you come and work for me it was simple as that and then we sat down and spoke and went from there look I think um it's attractive for people to to be in a uh, an up and coming brand, one that's growing. Uh, I think it's also exciting to have someone that's actually going to develop you and, and invest time into you. I know a lot of us have probably <laughs> had a gig at a gym where you sort of just get there and you don't really see anyone or get any help along the way. It doesn't really feel like there's a benefit for you. It's mainly just feels like the business owner that's going to benefit. So it's, um, yeah, I can see why you're attracting good, good humans into the business. But yeah, look, I, we, I, I interviewed a, f- a few people as well. Like, well, they weren't just the only three that I'd interview. We did a few, a few and um, um, but yeah, they, these three sort of, like I said, have, the fact that I knew them was was very helpful. But I knew the other ones as well, funnily enough. But uh, yeah, now these three were definitely the right choice. It's proving, well, certainly proving to be the right choice. Well done. It's obviously a, an ongoing process. No, no one that we hire is going to have all the skills. Um, if they did, they'd probably own the gym across the road. <laughs> um, so you, you're trying to get someone who's a good human. You're trying to have, uh, ideally, they've got some skill set, like a six or a seven out of 10 from day one. And then you're trying to just invest into them and, and get them up to that point where they do a really good quality service, good quality delivery on the product. But definitely, I guess like all of us, they've got their strengths and, and weaknesses. Um, and... Oh, yeah, look, and my relationship with them just just off stuff that um, I know the last one of the last um, sessions that you and John had, and we spoke. John spoke about um, you know how to do um, how to speak to you and motivate your staff, and, that, and that's been really helpful as well. Okay. So, um, but as I know, they, they've certainly got their strengths and weaknesses, and you know we we try to strengthen up those weaknesses and chat about them, and but yeah, they're they're. Um, Oh, look, I, 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 right now, mate, I ca- ca- could not be happier with the staff I've got. So good. I think, guys, um, something I've ob- observed with Steve as well is his leadership style. So he's someone who wouldn't ask something of a staff member if he wasn't sort of prepared to do it himself. He's someone that sort of leads by example. Um, I remember in, in like back playing sport um, that that was always the leader that I would prefer to follow. I, I think I've been in those teams where, you know, someone that yells a lot and there's someone that kind of you know, points out what you've done wrong, but always uh, I always feel like giving more of myself. I feel like helping and feel like it's a team sort of effort when the leader has a clear direction, but they also sort of um, lead by example. So they'll, they'll get their hands dirty and get in there and, Steve, that's definitely something you're doing really, really well at the moment and um, something, you know, I really encourage you to keep as you continue to scale up. Oh, 100%, mate. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said there. Hey, um, Steve, give us a bit of a, an indication on results in, in Gym Hub. How many members have you got um, uh, now and how long have you been open? Are we opened in uh, July last year, July 20. So just as restrictions were starting to lift, from COVID, uh, and we'd set a target to try and have 200 members um, after 12 months. Yep. Um, we're at 220 now, so we've been open nine months and we're up to 220 now. So good. Um, what are some of the things you've sort of learnt about lead generation or what are, what are things that are actually going really well and helping you to get up to 220 members in, in nine months? Um, and probably the number one thing is is really high quality and consistent um, social media posting, which I found okay. been really benefit, beneficial for us. Yep. Um, and we got to um, pay you know good money to get a good a really good high quality video done. Um, and I, I outsource our um, our Facebook posting just so it's just something I didn't have to worry about. I, I, whether we do that all the time, I'm, one of my staff is getting very up to date with it as well so we maybe won't outside outsource it but um and i still obviously we still have a lot of input into what, what goes into it and we, and we um talk regularly with our social media person but um yeah good. if you get the get that, that the quality of that really good i find that has helped us immensely yeah and i think that's an important thing to understand is um You've got to actually know what to post and what your um, 
target audience actually see value in. Because if you're just posting daily or five times a day, it doesn't actually do anything um, unless they're interested. So the stuff I was on your Facebook account this morning, I was having a look. Um, stuff you do well, you're doing little profiles on staff and you're sort of pointing out that staff are here to help you. You're doing like little uh, examples where you educate the market as to who the staff member is what their experience is, what sort of courses they're done. So I think that stuff sort of increases the credibility for you guys. Um, I, you also do a lot of those sort of client shout outs where you give examples of people that are real people. It doesn't look overly sort of doctored like a lot of the rubbish on Instagram and that, but it's, um, yeah, it's acknowledgement for your existing members. So they, they, they obviously feel proud that they've achieved something, but you're, you're also celebrating their wins. So there's so much evidence of the product, like the, the success of the product that you're doing on social media. So um, as to who does it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you pay someone who sits in an office at Adamstown and like in your gym or whether they sit offshore or whether they sit in Newcastle somewhere, it's the same sort of stuff. Um, I think, um, yeah, the, the more that you just get strategic with what you're posting, that's, that's kind of that important stuff. So well done. Hey, no, thanks, mate. Look, as I said, it's, it's the stuff that, you know, once again, learn off yourself and, and, and John and, and then and just working with this, obviously the social media person that we use, it's um, when we get inquiries every week and the reason they say is because of, you know, what they see on social media. Um, you've got a... Uh, uh, Fancy, lovely uh, website. I might just bring it up on screen for the guys. Um, how have you sort of found the experience of like paying for a bit of professional branding uh, and having a like a professional website done for anyone that's kind of considering that or or perhaps um, due for a refresh? Oh, man, look, is it, not only having it, it's been great, but the guy who set it up, He's been so good to work with. And then, like, any time we need any updates or anything, he's just so I don't know if you want to give Chen a bit of a <laughs> plug Look, um, this thing, but he's so there's but lots of the people that can do stuff. websites. Um, yeah, I so if you want the details, I Steve's uh, the guy that did Steve's website did my website. Um, I don't get a commission or, or I'm not really encouraged to be sending stuff to Chen, but it's um, yeah, his, his product's really, really good. I guess the thing I was trying to relate to is the outcome. Like if you get a site like this, it obviously helps it to feel premium. And it, it really sort of positions you in the market um, uh, differently than I think like the, a lot of the gyms kind of look. So guys, I encourage you to jump on to Sunrise Fitness uh, website. You'll see they've got like blog content on there, stuff that you've done recently that I think is really adding value, stuff like this video. So, you know, people are shopping online before they actually come through the door and they learn a bit about your story and the clientele that you serve and i think that type of stuff um makes your website a lot stickier so people won't sort of get to the website and leave straight away they're impressed by it uh, they'll revisit it because they're getting constant reminders via email and social media to go and check out a blog or a recipe but i think once they're ready they've also got that information where you know, if I'm not quite uh, confident enough to call you or leave my details, I can actually get some of those answers with the uh, the video. So, um, man, I, I love the branding. I love the, the website. Um, but I also like the um, how clean it is, like the description around who you are, who you service, and then putting that video there enables them to do a bit of window shopping before they, they, they ring you. Yeah, like when, when we set it up with Chen, like we just... Um, spoke about you know how we wanted it to look and and um, you know obviously he, he gives some great ideas and 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 so quick and coming back to you every time you say oh, man what about this what about this and he just makes it happen so but yeah we, how it looks is exactly how we wanted it to look and yep um, yeah but it's it's it really helps helps with our business most definitely as you say. You know, whenever we do something on social media, trying to get leads to go back to the, the website, it's important that website lo looks exactly how you want it to look. Yeah, it's so good. And guys, um, Steve will be the first to admit he's very new to everything um, technology-based. Um, kind of just opened a Facebook account literally to open the gym and, you know, isn't investing a lot of money into complicated funnels and stuff like that. So 
I encourage you, if you're, you're doing it on a lower budget, if you're interested in sort of how to grow a bit more organically, there's a, there's a bunch of tips in here. Um, Steve, one of the things I was really impressed with was your referral campaign. Um, do you mind sort of sharing a few details around what it was and, and how it went? Yes, we, we did a, a referral campaign for the whole month of December. Yep. Um, so members, so we really um, plugged it, like we put out flyers, we put it on social media, we spoke about it consistently at sessions with our members. So we really plugged it during no, November. Yep. And then um, if members uh, bring in um, a friend, that friend, um, you know, that friend joined, um, the the um, member got a hundred and fifty dollar gift voucher. Okay. And the and the and the new um the new the new person got um I think an extra an extra week we got them three weeks free. So okay. and it may it worked like I said it, I think the offer was really good but with the um leading up to it we really advertised it and marketed it really really well. I think the timing of that was exceptional. I think when you get to November, December, you're probably aware you've got to duck out and <laughs> buy some presents for your kids or your your friends or whoever. Um, so to pick up a, a gift card, um, what, what was the gift card? Was Remind me, was it Westfield or something? What did you do? It was just a $150 gift card. They could use it anywhere. It's just like a Visa gift card. Oh, so Visa. They could use it anywhere, yeah. Cool. yeah. So okay. um, that proved really popular, yeah. And like I said, I, I was a bit unsure how, how much to go at first, you know, thinking, oh, it's 150 bucks, but... Um, but it, it paid for itself in about three weeks. What's interesting, Steve, is the the quality of the person that gets referred. Like it's up to guys listening. If they wanted to replicate something like this, you mightn't have to do $150. You could do $50 or $100. But the people that they refer already know someone that trains there, already loves the training, already got a bit of an idea about who you are, what you charge and stuff. So conversions like nuts like everyone that, that comes in is pretty much gonna gonna start um at no point are you sitting on facebook but you're just actually you know providing the service and it's based on did you like it do you think it'll help if so cool a or yeah. b which program do you want no we we haven't got an open day this saturday and same thing if members can bring a friend and if the members um a friend joins on the day, they get a free month, and then so does the member. Right. Um, yeah, like already we've got, you know, 20 members bringing 20 friends. So, I mean, you know, whether they all sign on the day or whatever, I don't know, but it just, just generates interest. Um, well, like I said, if we market it really well, it generates interest straight away. I love, um, I love that it's win-win. Um, I think the mistakes some of us will make is always making the reward. So the initial referral competition was like a gift voucher. And I think things like Visa gift card, we use it on, on anything you want is a really good reward. I've seen things work well where it's like a restaurant voucher or a um, like a massage voucher or something like that. Um, sometimes the additional exercise benefit isn't that appealing. So if I'm an existing member and you say, hey, you can get extra um you know two personal training sessions on top of it a lot of members don't want to do any more training they've already got sort of a membership so um yeah. i love the fact that you're mixing it up i love the fact that you're doing another referral competition now because you had one great in De uh, december you're doing one now in may um and this one is essentially a for for an open day so you know the best people to get in front of an open day are ones that have been brought by existing members so that's that's very clever yeah, no, no, it's just, it was sort of, bit, we've been marketing it for the last two weeks and first week was quiet, but this week it's just really gained momentum, which is, yeah, it's exciting. It's good. I, I had a look on your uh, social media. It says that there's 35 minute sessions on on the day so people can trial it. They can come in for a coffee. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So we just got a, um, uh, someone like a, that does you know does coffees for that's their living so they they they're bringing like a little coffee cart inside the gym so people have actually got to come into the gym um yep. yeah we've, we've done up you know gift bags for everyone great um we've got a few little stalls there um we, we just short the sessions what are the, what are the stalls uh asn um you know the supplement shop that they're they're going to be in shop. there there's a is going to have a little stall in there um there's a lady that's that's one of our really good members she does like a bit of a stretching 
business that she's got. She's going to set up a little store there. Love it. Um, so, but yeah, that's that'll um, it'll sort of take up a bit of space in the gym. So we've had to sort of mix things up and we've shortened the session times. But mm. um, yeah, I think maybe, I think just the coffee alone is dragging lots of people to be honest. Honestly, that is so true. Like to, to get people there on a Saturday, there's usually got kids sport and stuff like that. But if you put food on or coffee, they're going to have it anyway. So they can always drop in. Um, yeah. I love I love the fact that you've got a game plan there for people if they want to join. I think we can go nuts and sort of make it a really good sort of community thing for our existing members. And they say good day and you meet their partner. But at the same time, like, why not have a special on the day where if, if someone's motivated to, to do it? Um, what I find is really, really cool is you're doing like an event at the, at the center. So they come in, they see how big it is, they see the facilities and they go, you know what, this is actually really good. Um, and you can have a bit of a chat. So um, yours sounds like a bit of an expo sort of feel. If they walk around and they look at the physio and they look at stuff, it's not so obvious that there is an opportunity to buy because it feels like an expo format if you don't have anything else to do when people come in they come in they say hello and then there's someone sitting there with a clipboard saying hey do you want to join up yeah (laughs) and and, and that's a common mistake like i see gyms do it all the time where it's like blooms and then a sales table pretty much and it's like what are are you doing like make it make it fun make it valuable first and if people are interested you know, from there, that that's really useful. A um, couple of ideas that might be useful, and let me know if you've sort of ticked any of these off. Um, I like having things like balloons and colouring in, just in case kid, they bring their kids along. Um, but yeah, we should, we've, we've set up balloons, but yeah, mate, I didn't think of the colouring. Let me write that down, mate. That's because people will for sure. So at, at our gym, um, there wasn't heaps of kids that sort of came on our last open day, but. I always find if the kids are kind of kept distracted or busy, I can then have a chat with Mary who's brought a husband along or something like that. If the kids are pulling on their legs and they're like, can we go like my kids do? It's, it's a, a, it's a real punish. So I just went onto Google images. I typed in like cartoon or whatever. I just printed out random things. I put like a kid's table down. um, And I just said, you know, coloring in competition, um and you, yeah i just got one of my kids to color in one of them as an example put it up on the wall but the kids are like sweet something to do and they, they understand straight away what what their role is but i, I think that's kind of handy um, i think it's cool to have lots of staff there just to get in conversations I, I think the trap is that you end up speaking to a lot of your members if you can have extra staff you want someone there taking photos one of the things that proves how good your community is, is like an example of 20 people in there. There's balloons, there's people chatting and a, a bit of fun. So you want someone taking photos, you want the ability yourself, ideally, to be able to sort of say hello to people, but you need someone answering questions and, and um, you know, being available to sign someone up. Um, I find it quite slow to, to dive in, grab people's credit card and all that type of stuff. So we just create little one page uh, registration sheets. So if someone is gonna start on the deal on the day, it's a pen and paper like old school and they just go boom, 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 they fill it out. And we just like, we'll put them all into the software after everyone goes, you yeah. can get a, get a beer and do it in your own time. But you don't yes. wanna be doing any admin when, when it's sort of face to face time. Yeah, no, nah, mate, agreed. Look, look, I've got all the staff on, so pretty much, Two of the staff will be taking the, the sessions and me and one of the other staff will just be there walking around talking to people, you know. So, we, yeah, as I said, we, it's, all, it's all hands on deck on that day. Um, other stuff I've seen really uh, work well is like an enter to win type competition. So you might get a Sunrise Fitness uh a hoodie and a hat or something you just put it into like a little pack or a basket type looking thing um, and people can register to win so even the people that don't buy on the day they might still leave their details and then you, you might have an extra 20 to 50 names of people that just left their info um that's yeah, really nice. easy in the week after to say hey thanks for coming to our open day we really appreciate the support as a little thank you Here's a uh, two-week trial voucher. Come in and, and, and see what we do. Um, yeah. That's easy to do with someone that's met you, seen your facility. Really difficult to do if you don't actually collect their details. So yes. it might be worthwhile. 
Yeah, um, no, yeah, right. Hey, last little thing on uh, open days. Make sure absolutely anyone who's a non-member actually signs a waiver. The last thing you want to do is have a an ankle injury or something like that. And it, they're, they're not actually covered by your insurance unless they sign a waiver. What's one thing you kind of wish you knew earlier? So you've been running fitness businesses and been in the fitness industry for a while. What about someone that's maybe uh, looking for a similar sort of growth like you've had, 220 members, nine months? Um, what do you, what, what's a learning or what's a, a, a takeaway? Mate, pretty one easy one for me, mate, is because my website before was pretty ordinary and I okay. you know, did it on the cheap, whereas this one, look, I, I, I wouldn't say it was super expensive, but I, I, whatever money I spent on it has been money well spent. But it's um, get a really good website, one that's easy to follow, um, and the person who sets it up for you makes sure that they're really easy to deal with, which my book is absolutely sensational. And then, um, I look, mate, I, and I, I guess as I mentioned before, the, um, the, the, the consistent and the quality social media posting is the other one, but mate, I always yeah. come back to having a really good good website. I know it's probably an obvious thing to say, but um, you know yourself, whenever you you know you, you Google something and you go to a website, the website's too difficult to follow or it just doesn't look professional, you just turn it off immediately. So, um, mm. yeah, and in the past, mate, I just didn't take realise it. As I said, just in experience and just didn't realise how important it was. And, um, yeah, so it, it works really well for us. I think the thing I like about your website is it's clear, like it's clean. Um, yeah. I think modern modern premium websites don't have a lot of clutter. Um, and I think it's, it's obvious. So I, I look at websites across all sorts of industries and I, I can't help it, you know, I go into like a restaurant, for example, I'm always sitting there thinking, I wonder what the table, how much that table pays. I wonder how many people could sit in here. I, I don't know why, but I've got this like business mindset where I'm thinking, geez, that, that'd work out good. And I'm trying to figure out whether they make any money. <laughs> um, the, the thing about a website that I like, even outside of your one, is if there's not too much on it. And it's actually obvious where, for where you want people to take an action. And I think the mistake a lot of people make is they create a website that's like a one-way flyer, like we did sort of 20 years ago, where it sort of just has information on it, and it doesn't actually prompt people to do anything. So they, they look at the website and they go, huh, and they keep going. If You need them to click something. You need them to watch a video. You need them to click on a testimony or a, a blog or something like that. And if they don't spend time on the website or take an action while they're on there, I think the website's kind of failed. So... Guys, um, check out, uh, Shine's put the website in there. Um, not that you need new websites, but it, it could be useful just in terms of your own branding. The same rules apply. Um, you know, David, Challenge Fitness, you guys that have got your own brands, um, I, I see flyers that look like this as well. I see a, a post on social media. There's too much clutter. Like what, what's the thing, who does it help? How does, what, what's the thing that you sort of help them with? And then what's that one thing you actually want them to do to so try and get through through that? Um, I'm interested to ask you, Steve, um, you don't get to 220 members that fast paying, you know, 55 bucks a week unless you're keeping some members as well. <laughs> um, what's a couple of things that you do that help uh, member retention? What are you doing well? Are you, we, we sort of keep it con constant contact with our members, you know, via um, email and SMS and then also um, individual phone calls to members, just not, not, not super regularly, but every, say, six months just to check in with them, you know, go back over their goals that they first set. Um, but, yeah, as far as, like, sending stuff to that, the, the entire group, you know, we have, like, a... Um, they're very similar to yours, you know, what's going on at Sunrise Fitness goes out every two weeks. Yeah. Um, you know, constant SMSs about, um, you know, what, what's coming up, you know, obviously about the you know, open day or whatever whatever happens that we're advertising. And as I said, then, then just that individual um, contact we have with people, you know, just and, and their actual phone calls that we ring up and say, look, just checking in, you know, um, with your, your goals and you know things, you, enjoy, you know what are you enjoying at the gym, 
Um, so yeah, but then we we when, when a person signs, we set it set it up so we know every six months to make sure they they get that phone call. Yeah, it's good. I'm just scribbling down some notes. I hope hope you guys are doing the same. Um, reaching out over the phone every six months, but specifically asking them about their goals. Um, we had four members drop out last week uh, of my gym. And when we went through the information, um, like who they were, um, I noticed that all four of them didn't have a, a goal for the next three months. So I think what, what we're really good at as gym owners and as fitness industry professionals is when they come through the door, we, by nature, we just quickly say, how can we help and what do you want to do? I think what we sometimes overlook, and even I've made that mistake at my team uh, this month, is making sure that we actually find the next thing. Like if, you, if they come in for weight loss and you help them with it, they will leave unless you find something else to do with them. So it's, um, yeah. it's the call and it's the time, but it's also going, okay, if we don't find something for this person, we've got to expect that they're actually going to jump out so you might get off the phone and go, okay, I've made 10 calls. These two, I still don't actually have a plan for anything that they're inspired to train for. I would be walking around the gym floor. I'd be trying to grab them during the week. I'd be trying to recommend things to them because until those two have something that they're there for, like an actual reason, I, I think they've got a big question mark or red flag on them, you know, soon, soon to leave. Yeah, no, definitely, mate. We, we, we just started... Um, Last Friday, having information nights as well. We we just did one on nutrition last Friday. We've we've sort of held off doing um, um you know like a, a four or six week challenge. But we had this nutrition night, and then at the end we just spoke about look, we're going to have a four week challenge um, starting in two weeks. But yep. just the amount of people that came along to just this in, information night. So we found that really successful. And got really good feedback from it, and you know a lot of people saying, "Oh, you know, this is great offering this." You know, just on the on the side. So that's something we're going to do every few months now, just on a Friday evening. And yeah, we're, we had to offer alcohol to get people there, I think, but on a Friday, but it was a good turnout. <laughs> Again, it's it's predictable and it works. Um, I like that. I think the key here for a retention is finding something you can provide in your service that's over and above what the expectation is. So if it's a 24 hour gym, that is the bare minimum that they can get access. Their swipe tag works and the equipment's all working. Some gyms get that wrong. Um, however, if you, even if you're a 24 hour gym, you can still add better service than your 24 hour gym competitor. So if you've got someone that checks in around goal setting, if you've got like a info nights on, uh, hypertrophy or fat loss or something like that it's going to be really popular but it, it's perceived as high value because they didn't expect it you know when you go to a cafe and they put a little biscuit or a, a chocolate coated uh, coffee bean or something on there and it's like wow that, that's pretty cool thank you it's so small like it costs them nothing to do but you didn't actually pay for it ask for it and it's like something something extra i love it yeah. So I've written down six month calls where you specifically ask about their call, uh, their goals. I've got a um, newsletter every two weeks trying to get engagement around things like um, what's on, but also like recipes and blogs. Um, I like the fact that you're not just using SMS for uh, outreach and sales. You've realized that SMS is the highest open rate. It's like 100% open rate. So why not use it for our members as well and make, make sure they know that there's an event or an info night on. Um, you mentioned four-week challenge. That's a great way to keep people engaged. Um, we, we did almost a month with no dropouts during the month that we were doing a challenge. And that's not a coincidence. If people have got a reason to be there, they, they don't tend to drop out. Um, the last one I've just scribbled down is that personalized. You're obviously um, getting to know people's names and you're, you're making it like a fun culture where you sort of introduce them to each other when they're in there. So Sukuma uh, has just asked, how, how do you actually uh, operate with 200 plus members in terms of time slots? Um, I know you said before, you've got 36 sessions uh, per week. Um, his question there is more around sort of space. Do you find everyone wants to do 7 a.m. on a Tuesday? How, how are you managing it? For some reason, our busiest session is the, um, we have a 5.55 a.m. class and the busiest one is on a Tuesday. So it, sometimes it books out. Um, but it only ever books out the night before, so we just encourage people to, um, you know, book in via the app as early as they can. 
Um, but you soon find that if people can't get into that class, they'll come to the five. We have a five oh five class. I'll yeah. come to that, or they'll just they'll come that afternoon. But thirty six sessions with a space for thirty two people at each session, which I think I think is a thousand and two maybe. Yep. It's only one class that's that has been getting full and, and, and fully booked out. Yeah. I think, um, Sukuma, sometimes we can put too much variety in the timetable. So if, um, if you've only got a silks class on three times a week, it's sometimes really difficult for everyone to get into that class. But if you've got less variety in the types of classes, like look at the F45 model, it's essentially the same workout. There's a, a variation from you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think it's cardio uh, strength is Tuesday, Thursday, but it's the same sort of stuff. Um, it actually makes it easier because I don't have to sort of go through the timetable and line up to get into that one. I can actually go to the one after it. Uh, that, that's a similar sort of class. So yeah, just be mindful of um, helping people to find a time that might work, help them to show them how to sort of book in. Um, we've had a couple of times that are just really busy. So we used to get a super busy on a Thursday night at six o'clock, I think from you know, sporting and uh, habits and stuff like that. People have had their, <laughs> they're used to going to a team sport Thursday at six o'clock. So that's when they want to train. Um, so we used to have like an indoor class and then we'd do an outdoor one. So we started like a running and box club on a Thursday. So we found if, if the indoor one got full, people could still go and do the other one. So our capacity went from like 36 up to like a hundred because all of a sudden we had, you know, more space outdoors for it. So um, that's really helpful. Thank you, Steve. Uh, from Mike, the two-week free trial process, once people inquire, um, yeah, so he's asking, you seem to have stick to the free. Have you considered doing a paid trial? Uh, why why stick to the, the free one? I've just found that it's worked really well for us. And initially, we thought we'd just do it for the first you know, few months, but it just generates um, a lot of interest. And look, I must admit, there's, there's probably been... Oh, look, I'd say at least 100 people that have tried it that you knew were probably never going to, going to join. But look, sure. if, if, you know, they, they've been here, they've experienced it, and if they're talking to people later on, they I'd say, oh, this gym was, you know, was really good. Yeah. Um, so we haven't thought about a, a pay trial. We're really happy the way the two-week free trial works. Um, when people do come in for that two-week free trial on, on their first day, we... We, you know, offer them if they're happy to join on the day that we'll, we'll um, we used to make it, we'd give them three weeks, but we bump it up to a month. Just find that that's, um, I don't know if it's a Newcastle thing or not, but we find that, that that really works well for us. So we'll just, as long as it's working, we'll, we'll stick with that. And that's an important point. Um, like a new brand, new studio, that, that was like a launch promotion you know, is to encourage people just to come and see who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, um, actually, yeah. But, but, but what's interesting, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. So if it's still generating inquiry and leads, keep using it. Um, yeah. Something you might consider, Mike, um, sometimes the, the free gets, gets stale. So Steve's still sort of under his first 12 months. Um, and at some point when he gets to the 18-month mark, whatever, it, it might be worthwhile sort of cutting out some of those lower quality leads, but um, it's working right now. So yeah, you yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't change it. I, I imagine, as you say, Steve, anyway, you know, we're not anywhere near capacity at the moment with those 36 sessions. Like I said, it's over a thousand spots each week. So, you know, I, hopefully, in, as you say, whether it be 12, 18 months, if we're close to capacity, yeah, we, we would probably certainly look at possibly a paid one then, but at the moment it, it doesn't take up, you know, you know, members aren't missing out on spots because we're still generating, you know, getting a lot of new people coming in trying the two-week free trial. How big is your studio? 290 squares. So okay. probably about 245 of that is is gym floor. Yep. So it's it's a it's a really good space and it's just a great uh, you know, just a big rectangle space. So That's it's uh, yep. works great. It's good. So if you've got the space, if you're still getting lead flow from the promotion, I think sometimes we get in that habit. I, I don't know um, what you guys are like, but I, I actually learnt some bad habits by gyms that I worked at. So the gyms I worked at would often just change their promotion every month. 
So when I opened the gym, I would have a May promotion, and a June promotion, then a July promotion. And it's so much time and effort to actually get new creative done and to start promoting it. Um, when you find something, so it's, it's actually a member acquisition system that you're after. When you find something like Steve's two-week free that actually resonates really well with the local area and continues just to pump leads, um, I'd encourage you to use that as your default offer. So even if he switches gears this month and he does like the four-week challenge or something like that, he's, it's in his best interest to actually go back to the two-week free trial after that. So you, you don't need 12 offers in 12 months. Um, you know, in, in, in my case, I, I might use like four different things over the space of 12, uh, 12 months, but you largely want to have something that's high value, no matter how it's actually dressed up. And um, I think if I'm honest, a lot of us probably don't get enough eyes to actually see the offer. Now, a lot of us probably don't have enough credibility of people that care that we're doing an offer. So like for yourself, Steve, you've, you've started with an offer, it works, you haven't had to change it. So you spend your time um, adding a, a really engaging post on social media that gets people's interests. Um, and then you sort of just keep warming them up with email and, and different things like open days where they can come in and make a decision. So the offer's worked, it's always worked. There's actually more credibility and more traffic to the offer that's enabled yours to just keep keep working rather than just sort of always changing it every 10 minutes. Yeah, agree, mate. Agree with you, um, Sam. Um, notice, guys, that he's not doing like 50% off memberships or anything. It's it's a discounted trial. I think that's a really important one. I like that it's two weeks and it's no longer. Um, I always find anything longer than sort of in 14 days does get more of those uh, tie kickers kind of coming in. Um, other questions. Uh, what's your competition like? Have you got anyone doing group training near you? Uh, yeah, look, we've got um, two F45s um, within, oh, well, there's one in Adamstown, there's one in Katara. So yep. within five minutes, there's an air locker five minutes away, um, which is, you know, it's, it's fairly popular as well. Um, there's, uh, there'd be, Two or three 12 rounds within five or ten minutes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, competition's pretty high. And then there's little studios all around the place. But, so, but just places that offer very similar to us, like Airlocker F45 and um, 12 rounds, they'd be within 10 minutes, eight or, eight or nine of us. It's interesting because Adamstown obviously spread out a little bit more than where my gym is. Everything's kind of walking distance, but that that's actually you know a fair bit of competition in that space. Obviously, we're not including CrossFit, yoga studios, um, yeah, twenty-four hour gym. But you know, there's dozens and dozens of them as well. But ones that are doing a similar sort of delivery or product. Um, I think what's kind of cool is how you go about your business because lots of people are doing group fitness, but it's and, and good providers as well. They're not sort of jokers, but you're um you're oh, yeah, in the same marketplace because it's um it's how you sort of deliver it. I think one of the F forty fives up here was one. Of, I think it was one of the second ones, second F forty five open. And they they um you know I'll go, I can name twenty of people that I know that go there you know because it's been yep. there for a good while, and I know um. One of the Knights players, uh, ex Knight players, started Airlocker up here, and that's he's a and he's a really good guy. He's doing really well there as well. So, right. but it, that's good. To, it's healthy, healthy competition keeps you on your on your toes. Yeah, no, I think that's important as well. Um, sometimes that competition's kind of cool. Like if you want to charge fifty five dollars a week for a group training model, there's in some ways some thanks that goes out to brands like F45 that have sort of trailblazed and they've got the market ready to pay 55, 60 bucks. So people yeah. don't blink at it when they come in. Uh, what's interesting, but is if, if, it, if, if they don't have someone with experience, if they don't have quality and, and a personal touch in there, that's where some of those kind of national branded um, studios can lose, um, you know, clientele to yourself. So, Guys, I really encourage you to think about your own model. What are your strengths? What are you doing to actually win clients in a competitive market? Not, not that you've, um, there's a, I think sometimes we have that perception that it's limited and either this guy wins or this one doesn't. It's, it's actually like everyone can actually win, but are you doing enough to actually help people yourself and how good your product? So 
So good. Um, any last thoughts, Steve, before we let you go? Anything else you would sort of share with any of like, that's been working well or anything that, uh, anything that uh, really hurt you in, in terms of decision making that you'd want the guys to avoid? Anything else? Mate, no, I, I, I know that I couldn't have done it without yourself, mate. Like I, I said, I drove down to Sydney and, and had that chat with you. Um, I can't remember the name, but the suburb you wrote, mate. But when we sat down and spoke and, and I said to you, mate, if I'm going to do this, I, you know, I want to be on board with you. And, and um, mate, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's been the, um, the difference for me, for me really, as, as far as I, I wouldn't have, one, I wouldn't have taken on, taking on a new business and spending which we all know how much money it costs to set up something that you want to do. But um, maybe without your guidance and John, of course, as well. Um, but yeah, so, but I, you know, I, I, I know myself every time I get a bit lazy, you know, make sure I keep keep doing the stuff that you guys always tell us to do. So mate, being guided by um, the right people is, is made the massive difference to us. It's exciting, mate. You've um, you've you know more than covered your costs. You've got a cool team around you. You've got this like culture now between people that love your service. And to be honest, this is like my favourite part of a fitness business where the stress is gone. And you're actually at that point now where you're you're starting to make some really good money. Over 200 members in a group model, you're you're starting to make good money. But you can also um, yeah, you can new target, mate. Well, it, yeah, it should be. A, you've got the space for it and you've got a, a foundation. So just, just head down and bum up and yeah, keep getting into the group. I, I wish you luck on Saturday. I hope your open day goes really well. Make sure to get lots of photos and um, yeah, encourage people to bring friends. Uh, that's that's a, a perfect way to get attendance. Um, you don't need a thousand people to make an open day work. You just need some some good quality humans in there that maybe haven't seen the brand before. Yeah, yeah, mate. Now we're looking forward to it. Hopefully the weather stays good. And mate, yeah, should be a good day. Fingers crossed for you, mate. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks um, again, Steve. You're a legend. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Thanks, guys.